What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us. It's me, Tony the Kid, and my homeboy, Johnny G. What's up, Johnny G? How's it going, Tony? Hey, everybody. So, as you guys know, we're back. We're here to do a new episode. We are running everything all over. It's a reboot. Mm -hmm. Reject Reboot is what we'd be calling it right now. <laughs> Good name to it. I think it's just going to revamp everything for us. Uh, podcasting, I think it's going to be our forte right now in the beginning. Let's get our fan base going. Let's get you followers joining us and then hopefully make this big old brand into a, a great brand that us rejects lived off of growing up and you know show the world what we're all about you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we're gonna be basically talking about you know sports movies music comic book stuff you know all types of things right now stuff that we like that we grew up growing old and we would like to share and experience with you guys our thoughts and you know basically just things that we love and we want to share with you guys and hopefully that you guys would enjoy and you know like it you know what i'm saying it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time we're gonna have special guests and certain episodes some good specials like halloween specials christmas specials stuff like that you know let's get this fun stuff going and get us going and making us feel good and the inside make you guys feel like you guys are cool listening to us you know what i mean pretty so, much so let's jump into it, John. It's going to be Reject Rundown. Today, we're going to go down some news, some stuff that I think you're going to be surprised that I found out in the world that's kind of like, you know, crazy. So let's jump into it. First thing is Suge Knight. That's right. Suge Knight, the friggin' owner of Death Row Records at once, finally got sentenced to 28 years in prison for his 2015 death of a man that he ran over back in Compton outside of a burger joint. You know, I guess it was... You know, some altercation they had, and you can clearly see the video on YouTube. He clearly just runs over this guy and, you know, ends up dying in a hospital. So he finally gets sentenced to jail. And, you know, it was a long time coming because this guy was crazy. And seeing him growing up, that dude was just crazy. You know, that that's actually glad that that boy's put away. He needs to be put away. Other thing is, John Sir, if you didn't know, Birds of Prey, this casting calls. The movie's coming out in February 2020. I would say some of the actors they have on there they picked, or actresses, I'm sorry, are pretty good, pretty decent. I got We got Margaret coming back as her Harley Quinn role from Suicide Squad. She did perfect. I think that's going to be that's a good role Quinn. for her. Yeah, oh, yeah so like that. that's her. Mary Elizabeth Winston, if you haven't known, she is in the movie 10, 10 Cloverfield Lane. She's going to be playing Huntress, the main actress. Um, I think that's a good pick. I did see Tenfield Clover Cloverfield Lane. That's a good role for her. I think she'll kind of shine in a little bit. Um, Journey Smollett Bell. I'm going to see if I said it right. Um, she is in the movie Hands of Stone with Usher. She plays his wife. Um, she also used to be a little girl in Full House. So I think her being as, uh, she's cast as Black Canary. I think that's a decent role for her. Um, you know, just a good fill in. She looks like she can actually do some good work. She's a good actress. I think this could be a her her step into stardom in somewhat. Uh, Rosie Perez, she's coming back as Detective Renee Montoya in the movie. You know, so, my question about this is, Renee Montoya, um, she's supposed to be like nearly near her 30s or 40s, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how old Rosie Perez is, but I kind of feel like she's a little too old for the role. I mean, she's okay. still cute and I, all. I could say that too. I would yeah. see that. You know. But for me, I would have gone with uh, either either Eva Mendez from the Fast and Furious good franchise. Pick. Good pick. Or Rosalind Sanchez. That's a good pick, too. She did well in uh, Rush Hour. I think her, her you know, connection with Jackie Chan and uh, Chris Tuck, Chris, Chris Rock. Not Chris, Chris, Chris Tucker. Tucker. Chris Tucker. I said it right. I was close. They're all black, but <laughs> but yes, uh, I think she played a good role in that one as a detective, so that would actually be a good role for her. Not too bad. You know, the only thing I just don't like about Birds of Prey is that uh, Birds of Prey originally was based on a group that Batgirl herself created. Yeah, it was mainly came in from Batgirl. She wanted to have her home, like basically she wanted to have her homies and help protect the city. Yeah. You know, at one point and be on her own instead of being with Batman. And so, what you could have done different for a movie like this mm -hmm. is you could have done Birds of Prey versus the Gotham City Sirens. That would have been that actually would fit in for an all female DC lead movie. Yeah, you know that actually would work perfectly right now. And I think if DC would have gone that route, they would have been the first to make an all female movie. And I think that would actually fit in pretty well 
to help their franchise get back on track, get back rolling. So yeah. that's actually pretty cool. Other news, uh, Bad Boys 3 finally is going to be starting production possibly in early in 2019. So we'll be updating you guys on the actual date on it. Uh, I'm not too sure when it'll be, but, you know, good news is it's coming out. I'm actually looking forward to the movie, and it's going to be an entertaining, I think. I don't think they're bringing back Michael Bay in this one. They're going to be a different, uh, it's going to be a different director. So I, I, it's going to be a good mix kind of hopefully go back to the roots of the first movie where you know that's where it kind of started the franchise so hopefully hopefully it's gonna go route uh johnny this is actually gonna be your thing she-ra is coming on netflix november 26 you know it's a good cartoon for the kids you know it's something to kind of get them introduced and master the universe so it's gonna be a cartoon yes it's gonna be oh, an animated nice. cartoon so kids at a younger age will be able to see this and kind of get into the character um, get to kind of know the master in the universe, you know, universe basically. Get to know that character, so it's actually good, good in depth. Um, New Chronicles of Narnia TV series is will be coming to Netflix as well, John. That actually is going to be pretty cool because you know that's that's a good fit for him. That's actually a really good fit. I, I think that's going to be really well, cool. Yeah, because he can actually follow the books now. And yeah, a little more theory. Yeah. Build it more because Chronicles of Narnia, what they have like seven books, eight. They have around there. yeah, somewhere around there. And I think they, it's a, it's gonna be, it's in a very in depth type of book, you know, kind of like Harry Potter and stuff. And since the movie franchise, Disney didn't really back it up too well. I think this actually helps the franchise get more into it and get viewers to watch and get to understand the book better in the yeah. in the in the film franchise. So that, this is actually a good role for them. Uh. Arrowverse, the crossover, is finally titled Elseworlds. And, yes, Batwoman will appear in this. That's been been hot news going around. Ruby Rose will be cast as Batwoman. In my opinion, that's actually a good role for her. Ruby Rose is actually good at good, perfect type of character for that person. I saw her in uh, that one movie, John Wick 2, and I actually liked her role in it, even though she didn't talk much, but... She still had a screen presence. Yeah, I I did like it. There, I did like. I didn't like that she didn't fight so well. Like she really got beat up pretty fast in that one. So, you know, if Ruby Rose can, if they can get her training and get her to it, I think this would actually be a good fit for her. And if they really want to back her up and do a TV series with just her alone, that's actually be awesome. All right. Uh, Netflix is also bringing back Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It is uh, titled Sabrina, so it's going to be a little bit more darker and gritty type of version of this character. It is coming out October 26th. And it's a spin-off, right, off of Riverdale? Yes, yes exactly. So uh, it's going to be interesting, and a lot of fans really don't know Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It was more of a goofy comedy type of uh, TV series back in the 90s. Um, really fan favorite. I think this is actually coming back and fans will probably see a different side of this character that a lot of people wanted to see. So mm -hmm. going to be interesting. Now, what's been going on is Joker's, you know, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Images have been coming out. Little footages here and there are been have been showing. So I think in, it's, it's very interesting in where this character and where this movie is heading to. I don't know. You know, I'm very interested in it because it doesn't have any ties to Batman at the moment right now. There's really, you know, Batman's not going to be involved in the movie. I'm sure they'll have names of Gordon or the Waynes, the Waynes itself but involved see, in it. Thomas Wayne is involved in the movie. Okay. So, you know, that's actually going to be interesting. So it's going to be, it's, it's version. And I, like if John, since you've seen the pictures, you've seen the clips, what's, what's your thoughts on it? What do you think? Um, I was looking at the clips. I actually, when it comes to the Joker, um, he's one of DC's biggest names. The right. Joker. I mean, you really want to get it right. Yes, definitely. And I actually raised my voice because <coughs> if you watch Suicide Squad, that's the <coughs> one thing that fans complained about the most is your Joker wasn't where your Joker's supposed to be. He looked like, uh, and I'm sorry for saying this, but he looked like a guy who was just on morphine or crack. He basically, he really did his the tattoos. Like some of the tattoos wasn't bad. Like the hand one was good. I like that one. Yeah. The forehead one, I don't think it should have been there. No. 
his te- his grills on his teeth. It made sense because of where their storyline with Batman and having the ha 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 on the Robin yeah. costume. So it made sense to have an idea of him getting beat up badly to where he needed to have grills, needed to have fake teeth. So it made sense. That part wasn't that bad. But it just, it, the character himself and the way they portrayed it just didn't feel like an actual Joker, you know, background. And I was going to say that the thing I like about the new Joker is that if you look at um, the footage, he's being, I think, not directed by Martin Scorsese, but Martin Scorsese yes. is actually producing the film, I believe. Yeah. So you're actually getting a Joker who is within the mafia background. I, I like that. And I think that's actually a good story to start from for this character Joker. He is a fan favorite. He is such an important character in the DC franchise. And for them to have confidence in Joaquin Phoenix and doing this movie and to have this background, I think it's... I, I, I'm interested in it. I want to see it. I don't want to see too much of the footage. I don't want to see too much of the like, pictures. You don't want it to ruin it for yeah, you. Yeah, don't give me the ruin the taste for it. Let me... But, no, let me I was going to ask you something. I'm sorry to interrupt ahead, you, but my question, it just came <clears> to me <throat> right now. If you look at the footage... Does it look like they're mixing Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson? Yeah. To be honest, yes. I totally see it. It's just... it's That's why I'm saying it's just interesting. Like, it, it looks intriguing to me, but I don't want to... I don't want to go too much in depth to him because I want the surprise to be there for me. Yeah. You know, in the movies. And that's one thing I like about that. I don't like this, the surprises to be coming out way before the movie. I want it to be an unknown... Let me get in the movie. Let me see this film for whatever it comes out to be. So that's what I'm I'm looking into. All right, moving along. Uh, other news: We got Nicolas Cage. He's coming out stating that he would love to be Lex Luthor. He thinks he would be great in this role. My opinion: Why not? You know, he's been tied in this Superman stuff for years now, and I think him, yeah, he's a big Superman fan, right? And then him being a Lex Luthor, but, I think he would be better at better off than us having what's his Jesse face, Eisenberg. Or something yeah, like that. I think it'd just be more of a grittier. You know, one. it's funny uh, how Queen Phoenix got cast as a Joker, and he was actually my choice for Lex Luthor. You thought that actually would have been not bad, you know? Yeah, I he had the look, he has the ability to draw you into him. Yes, and. Before Joaquin Phoenix, a long time back, I actually had John Travolta as my Lex Luthor. You know, that wouldn't have been bad either. You know, because of John, John Travolta having such... His villain roles have always been that suave, evilish type of person. But also, like, he's two steps ahead of you in a way. Yeah. So, that actually would have been good. But... You know, Nicholas Cage, he, he has a smart mentality. Mm-hmm. He knows how to draw you when he talks. He knows how to... he. But my problem with Nicholas Cage is it seems like he's always the same guy in every film. Yeah. But Will Smith could do it, so why can't Nicholas Cage do I it? I totally agree. Like, I give it a shot. That's why not, yeah. you know? I think it's at least it's a better step up than Jesse Eisenberg. And I know? would do an Ellsworth. <laughs> if they want to do it, do an Ellsworth uh, Lex Luthor. Yeah. Build it on Lex Corp. Yep. How his dad died, he took over. Uh, you could build, bring in uh, Superman little by little too into his movie. Yeah, and, and just then do that. Good for mix. That's fine. You know, DCU is going to be on a whole, you know, different spectrum than it's what has been showing us to us. So it's a lot of stuff is up in the air. Why not? Uh, other news. Disney Fox deal, guys. It's actually moving along. It should be ending by t- the end of this year, 2018. So hopefully if this actually deal goes through by that time frame, by next year, I'm sure they're they're probably already working some stuff into X-Men crossover and stuff like that. Hopefully maybe by next year they can actually start filming and start adding some people into the franchise. I'm hoping. Yeah. You know, it's actually going to be good. Uh, Disney is making a live action Lilo and Stitch. That's going to be interesting. Uh, Ben Affleck, John, he's moving along. He's training to be Batman. Now, it's going to be interesting because there's really no confirmation. You know, we both know that Matt Reeves is looking for like a younger character. He's not really looking forward to having such an older character of Batman. Um, I'm, you know, I don't know where that's going. Uh, I know either way Affleck's going to be in the production. He's involved. 
he's going to be doing some type of writing into it. I mean, what 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 do you think? What are we going about here? What's what, well, we what's could do. Um, my idea would be, <clears throat> yeah, if you want a younger Batman, go for it. But here's my my play for it. Okay. Why not do a Batman that has flashbacks? Yeah. Okay. You All can right. start off with a flashback. You know, Ben Affleck starts remembering his past of what happened with. His Robin and everything. He was young in those days. Ah, yeah. Okay. D- dive into that. That's good. That's now, good. the storyline could be based on one of my favorite movies, mm-hmm. Mask of the Phantasm. D- okay. Yeah. Okay. This could work. This could work. Or you could do it on uh, Death of the Family. Setting Who, up what's for... What's Death of the Family? Let the me... Death of Jason Todd. Okay. Okay. So you do Death of the, in the other family. Uh-huh. You have a young Bruce Wayne. Okay. Uh, chasing after Joker, who Jared Leto would play, of course. Yes. Um, who looks exactly like the Joker <laughs> should look, so Matt Reeves could fix him up finally. A little bit, right, right, right. And then and have well, obviously at this time frame, he's not gonna have the teeth. No, he And the best part is that this could be an Elseworld Batman stuff. Okay. So now, not only are we getting an Elseworld Batman, but uh-huh. we're also getting uh, Elseworld's Joker played by the same guy who played him in Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. and see what he could do now. And have different look to him. Yeah. You know, okay. I like that. That's actually decent, you know, because it's still Matt Reeves like wanting a younger Batman and having to explore that aspect of Batman and still get give us the Ben Affleck Batman that we like. Because I like I, I totally respect his his Batman than a lot of what he was getting, you know, criticized for. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, it was good. I think they would just need to fix him up a little bit. His new costume. Give him a new one. Give us the thinner face. You know, type for of the suit mask. for the mask. Give us the tall ears that we were talking about. You know, give yeah. us a little more pointy of the ears. Change the color instead of black and gray. Let's give us the blue, blue and you know, blue and gray. And the you little... know, the best part of it is you can still <clears throat> add. Like I heard, they've been trying to get Deathstroke in it. Yeah, you can still add Deathstroke to this movie because he's very Deathstroke and Will Smith. It could be an also a good oh. thing for him. Deathstroke is... Uh, oh, Deathstroke is the other guy. I'm yeah. sorry. You know, Deathstroke, Deadshot, they're all... Deathstroke know, is the de- guy de- that de- played de- Flash de- Thompson in the original Spider-Man movie. There you go. So, it could just be basically, you know, him playing mind games and getting He's him the to one that about. distracts Batman so that Joker could kidnap yes. Robin. Yes, yes. Because this can also set up the... Um, Justice Legion, League. Legion of Doom Legion versus, of Doom versus, versus Justice, League. Justice League. Part 2. This yeah. going into Part 2, so... This could actually work out pretty well in their favor if they play the cards right, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's all based on what Matt Reeves wants to do. Yes. Um, If Matt Reeves doesn't want Ben Affleck as his Batman, then you know what Ben Affleck could do is say, you know what, I'm going to produce another Batman movie. He's do his own version of it, his yeah. take, his come out of his pocket, his money, his production company, and go for it that way. A lot of actors have done it before. Yeah, and I think this could work. You know, I... I He's I a would big like Batman fan, and I believe he could pull it off. Uh, I am right behind you, my friend. Right behind you. Now, we also got some trailers, some teaser trailers that happened oh, that we want to talk What's about. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we did. I'm sorry, guys. We did forget the Will Smith. You know, he wants to play Deadshot in this. He wants to be. He still wants his Deadshot versus Batman. So, obviously, he does want to face Ben Affleck. So, no matter what. We want a Ben Affleck Batman versus Will Smith Deadshot. Yeah, I like it. It's a good. It'll be a good set. Good set of a movie. I think if if Ben Affleck decides to go his own way, having he him can still use uh, Black Mask as a guy who hired Ben Affleck to kill. Yeah, I mean who oh, kill, who hired Will Smith to right. kill Ben Affleck's Batman. Because even at, when we got the Suicide Squad, we had that one guy like you don't know who you're messing with. Da da da. That could actually be Black Mask. And yep. then him saying, okay, well, you messed up that one. Or I didn't like how you treated me. You're going to do another job for me and I'm going to pay. You're not going to get paid for this one. You have to or I'm going to kill your daughter type of thing. Yeah. You know, that's actually good. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So now trailers. Now trailers. Yes. Going back to the teaser trailers. We did get some trailers coming out. We got Creed 2, Spider-Man into the in- Spider-Universe, Aquaman, Bumblebee, Captain Marvel, Shazam, and X-Men Dark Phoenix, the one I actually really liked that just came out recently, 
and I'm really interested in this movie right here. This actually is going to be very intriguing to me because they're jumping into the Dark Phoenix and they're going more in depth into Dark Phoenix than they did in the old X Men movies. So, yeah, true. So, as far as these movies, John, you know, we are getting, you know, Creed 2 first coming in November. We got December, uh, Spider Man. Then we also got Aquaman and Bumi coming on December. Next year, early March, we got Captain Marvel, Shazam in April. You know, then June, they pushed Dark Phoenix back into June. So, they're doing some reshoots on it. What do you think is going to be the outcome? Seeing these trailers, what did you like? Who did you, who did you like? And where are you looking at? Looking the forward funny to? thing about it is that I've seen all these trailers. I've seen Creed. Like you just said, you know, we've seen the trailers. <clears throat> yes. And... Finally, I'm, I've always been a movie fanatic, so mm-hmm. I can't always say I'm going to love this movie or not. I'm actually more of those guys that says, I can't wait to watch the movie. Yeah, you you and, just want to see yeah. what it's about, and yeah, you're open-minded to whatever they, whatever director is directing. Yeah, and then um, you the continue. thing about being a, like a normal moviegoer is that someone like me, I like to sit down and try to see if I can find myself within the film itself. Mm-hmm. If I find myself drawn in, then I know I just spent good money on it. Yeah. And I believe that each one of these movies, we're finally having movies that are worth a year that we're going to remember. Yes, I agree. And, uh, like, it's just, I'm kind of the same way. You know, I don't really want to go into big judgment into the movies. I am open-minded to a director changing some storylines of it. Um, you know, for example, like Fast Fantastic Four, when they changed Michael B. Jordan being Human Torch, you know, obviously we both know that's not the comic book stand up yeah. stand of it, but that's the director's point of view. And for me, open minded. If it's a, if he's a good actor and if he can pull this role out, why not change? You know, so there. That's what I'm into these. As far as these movies listed, that's coming out pretty soon. My one that I'm really intrigued, like I said, was is Dark Phoenix. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Creed 2, definitely, because the first one was awesome. Yeah, I'm and, actually waiting to see it. And this one is going to be with Dra- you know, Drago. Bring it back, Drago. And it looks going to be more intense, more into mind mind games for Michael B. Jordan and his role. And, I, you know, it's, it's going to be intriguing to me. And I actually liked it. I liked the trailer. The trailer looked freaking phenomenal. True. So I'm into it. Um, especially Aquaman. Now Aquaman, that like I, that movie, it's I feel it's gonna put DCU back on the map as far as movie goers. But obviously we know that everything else is kind of in jeopardy. Everything else is kind of like falling out of place. But I think if Aquaman could pull this off, if they can get great reviews on this movie, if they can get great money coming from this movie. I think they should start off use this character as their starting point. Yeah. Because this character is gonna go off. And especially with Wonder Woman, they do crossovers, this will be perfect. Um Bumblebee. That's actually another one that I wanna see because this director, whoever directed Bumblebee, is bringing back the old school cartoons type of version of I saw Transformers. That. I saw that also I was looking at the commercial <clears throat> at the trailer and I'm looking at Optimus Prime and I'm like the that minute I see him old school. I'm like I wanna buy that toy. Yeah yes, <laughs> like it just brings you back like it, oh man. That's you that feeling me like if you were a kid saying, I wanna buy that Optimus Prime toy. I'm yeah. like as soon as I see him, I'm like, I can't wait to collect that. Yeah. I that, actually wanna collect toys now. And, and then they have freaking uh I think the guy the guy was Soundwave, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, that was the character, the one who had the little cassette tape type of chest. I think that was was it Soundwave? Or? Might have been Soundwave because yeah. it would look like a boombox or whatever. That's I think that that's Soundwave. I believe so, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a you know I don't know the names of the Transformers. They all sound the same, <laughs> but that that guy it just looks like they're going. Whoever directed it, whoever designed that, the digital effects to it did a phenomenal job. And now here's Already. one thing I've always said: this is what you <clears> get <throat> when you have a fan. Yes, directing, directing and nobody. Pushing that fan to do it their way. Yes. When a fan says, I want to direct, I want to do this. Right. Back away and let them do it because they're going to have a movie that everyone's anticipating. Because they're looking at it as a fan point of view. Then looking at it as money. Money. And 
when the production is behind it and really forcing uh when they're forcing changes when they're forcing different you know more reshoots it really it destroys the movie the same thing what happened with justice league uh yeah, yeah justice league justice league what happens with batman, batman versus superman, superman you know they they added too much input into it even though we didn't really like how Zack snyder his the way he was his going vision. yeah his vision of but the storyline why i like about Zack snyder <clears throat> he's had the best visual effects yes his imagery was awesome yeah it's it's awesome it's and i love that sonic boom that he gets superman he's yes. flying you hear that boom. yes uh, like sound of breaking the sound barrier yeah that part right there i think makes superman's more intense for us in the movies I and like then that. those are the only elements I love. Uh, the storytelling was a little bit awkward. Yeah. But that's the thing is, if you get somebody who knows what they're doing, knows and could add elements from other directors into his. Yes. There's a good chance we could have <clears throat> better films. Like right now, this guy he's keeping Bumblebee almost close to what he looks like. Right. His height is at the same exact yeah. height. Yeah. But he's adding the elements of the cartoon because he loves the cartoon. I'm, he's doing a freaking fantastic job. Yeah. If that's going to happen, it's going to be awesome. And I it's like kind of it. like Shazam. I saw Shazam. I saw him in costume. I was hesitant at first, but when I saw him, I'm like, it looks and he acts like what a kid would act like. To be honest, yes. I'm kind of like, in this, this, that, go ahead and just brought this one up. Shazam is very, you know, my mind, I'm really going to have to keep my mind open on this one. I don't like how they're not adding Black Adam into this. Because he shouldn't be the first villain. Yeah. Oh, he should. Black Adam shouldn't be? No. Why not? Because the first villain has always been the guy he's fighting right now. Oh, that, that one with the yeah. bald-headed guy with the, the weird eye? It sets you up for Black Adam. Okay. Okay. I got you. I That's got you. That's why it's like... It's that thing when you did uh, Batman Begins. Yeah. You started off with Ra's al Ghul. Instead of a Joker. Instead of Joker, because everybody wanted Joker right away. What happened exactly. when at the end you saw the card? Oh, it set up for a everybody freaking, went crazy. Yes, that was awesome. Okay, I see you. So this Shazam one is just a good intro. And the Rock ain't gonna leave. I mean, the Rock he he wants to do Black <coughs> Adam. I mean, the Rock's been waiting yes. for Black for, Adam for years, and not just Black Adam. <clears throat> he's been waiting to face Superman as Black oh, Adam. Oh yeah, and that's why I'm gonna be kind of excited when they do. This is why I don't want Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill, 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 yeah, to go anywhere. I don't want him leaving nowhere. And Just keep you as Superman. That's why he's not going to be in the movie. Yeah, see, that's fine. But they're imagining him. They show his symbol and everything, so you know Shazam knows who Superman is. Because I would figure he's watching them on TV yeah. or something like that. He saw the fight, so he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna, he's gonna be gonna a fanboy of it. That's always been the good part about the DC universe when they do the cartoon series that they've always had a somewhat a connection to the other superheroes, even though they may not have been in the actual movie itself and part of the storyline. But they have reference of them. Yeah, you know they're much. around. Everybody knows each other. So what I think is going to happen is. They're keeping it quiet, but here's what I'm going to say. They're building up Superman versus Black Adam. Okay, I'm cool with that. With That's Shazam fine. in it. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. Now, would this be a Superman Part 2 yeah. type of film? Okay. This will That's be cool. the sequel that we've been waiting for, even though it's not what we wanted. We wanted uh, Brainiac, but I'd rather have Brainiac wait because I think Brainiac is a more powerful villain Very powerful. for a, a Justice League movie. I'm Yes, I would totally agree to that. Definitely agree to that. Kind of like the injustice. Yeah, you know what I mean. That connection with that, with all the characters needing to come together and fight this guy. Yeah, you could. And Brainiac could build. <clears throat> Brainiac could be the brains behind Legion of Doom. Okay, I'm cool. Giving giving um, Lex Luthor info. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's perfect. That actually would fit in well. If they can do it right, that will fit in well. Now, the- Dark Phoenix. This movie we just saw the trailer. Um, I did, news has been breaking out that the director is eliminating the X-Men part of it. Probably because Marvel now owns X-Men. Uh, possibly, that could make and sense. that means that Marvel wants to, you know, you could call it Dark Phoenix, do your Dark Phoenix saga, yeah. finish it. Yeah. But when it comes to us, we're, we're starting over again. They might bring back you the see, same actors. They might. I really hope they do because... If Marvel does take this um, this franchise, and when they do take the franchise, because they, they actually will, 
Um, he don't want a young Professor X stuff. <clears throat> as far as these characters, I, look, you don't and you do. I yeah. don't and I do. You know what I mean? I did like the direction of them going back in time, starting over with everything, um, doing the original cat, doing the original X Men, doing the original, you know, the, as them kids and stuff like that, growing old, growing up to be such a great team because of them being such a young age and working together from year and year and year and year. Now, these characters that they picked for the X Men, I thought were actually perfect. I thought this was actually helping Sony go in a, in a uh, good direction in this. Fox. And, yeah, oh, Fox, I'm sorry. In a great great direction and starting fresh, new, gritty type of X-Men because this series has is, is always been important. It's always been a good series for fans to get into as far as social injustice, um, racial injustice, uh feeling like you know you're left out in the society you know it just it gets in deep gets in gets in deep and they were doing good i think these characters are awesome i think that the the actors playing as the characters were great picks and i wish marvel if they're gonna take it use them because now it's setting you up to kind of jump that line and i think if marvel does there's a good chance that we're finally <clears throat> gonna get Sentinels in every movie. Yeah, you know you could use that for the Mar- other Marvel characters. You know. Yeah. And then imagine like other characters like Spider Man helping out, teaming up with these guys. You know. Yeah. You know I'm I'm cool with that, and that's especially actually cool. when Spider Man starts having those like six arms coming. Yeah. And he starts turning into the spider. Yeah. He that's has to go to the nice. X Men mansion to ask for help to figure out what the heck is going on. And me. imagine Patrick Stewart coming back as Professor oh. X to talk to Spider Man about what's going on. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. The thing about X Men now fanboys. that you had the, the reboot and the old school, yeah, is you can use the old school Professor X, yeah, and the old school team, mm-hmm. and or you can even just change the team but keep the Professor X because he's been the best one so far. He's the been, only one, but the only still, one and next lasted to since. James McAvoy. Yeah, has, has lasted since. And James McAvoy, props to him. I didn't really think he could pull out the Professor X, but he pulls it off and. I, I'm really happy that they picked that one because the last two, the two picks of Professor X have been great. Yeah. So, you know, I'm interested. I don't know. I, I'm actually looking forward to it. I want to see it. I'm having my eyes open, but I do wish that they do take over the X Men series that they take out uh, Mystique. I'm sorry. It's Make just, her a villain. Make her the proper villain that she needs to be. The anti-hero. Yeah, I think that's the problem. And it's not just Fox. That's the problem with <coughs> every company. You're milking Harley Quinn right now. Now yeah. you're milking... Yeah. You, before Harley Quinn was being milked, they've been milking Mystique because they believe that that was the thing that everyone wants to see. But no. Oh. If you look at the name of the title, we're going to see X-Men. We're not going to go see Mystique and the X-Men. And the X-Men. Or, We're not or seeing Wolverine Harley and Quinn X-Men. and the DC Comics. No, yeah. we want Suicide Squad. There you go. That's true. And that's true. the problem is you, every film, you milk one character mm-hmm. and the fans walk out saying the movie's bad. Yes. Because it's not what it's technically supposed to be, you know? Yeah. And with this Dark Phoenix one, we want to see Dark Phoenix. We want to see this, this character who plays as Dark Phoenix shine. Be the main point of the movie because that's what and I think is important. That's why Joker is. You know, I hate to jump back to Joker, but I think that's what's making it real important. Yeah, is that we're gonna finally see a movie that's just based on this villain. Yes, and it's uprising. Yeah, and it's actually a great backstory for him. And I think that's what they could do with Dark Phoenix to I'm, make it the same effect. And I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Oh, and that's what we're getting with Bumblebee. I mean, if you look at Bumblebee, mm-hmm. we've got a lot more Transformers in action and throughout the whole entire trailer yeah. than we've ever had in any Michael Bay movie. Ah, that's totally true because your Michael Bay movies always, always use the human as the main characters, more so than the Transformers themselves. Yes. So in this one, it's all about him. It's all about his past, present, and going to be future. So... That's why this would be important. So hopefully we'll see you guys. I don't know. We'll be, you know, watching these movies. We are going to be putting our reviews on them. So look out for those, those podcast shows.
because those will be definitely coming up when these movies come out. Um, and I think we'll probably definitely go more in depth in them when they like right before them, right before they release, because I'm sure there's gonna be more news coming out, more Rotten Tomatoes doing their voting or whatever, and we'll be discussing that too. You so. know, funny about that. Um, right now we're in uh, <coughs> October 5th. Okay, so Venom has already. Uh, we're filming this while Venom is coming out, and uh, there were already reviews within Rotten Tomatoes, and they got a 32 percentage. That's right. It did. But the audience gave it a higher score. Because it they... Well, you know, they, they enjoyed it. I think I saw a lot of the tweets of the mix of the premiere ones. They were a lot of mixed views. It wasn't more so bashing the film. They did enjoy it because it was entertainment. But the fanboy ones were more like, well, they could they could do this differently, they can do that differently. So it wasn't really a, a slide of a, a failure. It was more so where, okay, entertainment movie, they can do stuff different, you know, you know, there's a little bit of tweaks in here. So it doesn't make sense why you would have a thirty two percent when And I think you the reason be, why you're having a thirty two percent is because the guys who might have done this we're hoping of a Venom that it would have Spider-Man somewhere around there. New involvement. And since when they found out there, there wasn't going to be none. Yeah. But people are uh, saying that the post-credits are fantastic. Oh, the so post-credits. Check is, it out. Yes, definitely got to check it out. So definitely require you guys to check it out too. All right. And then our last uh, <clears throat> news of the day, I guess. Yeah. Um, We found out that, I guess, you know, Elizabeth Olsen and Tom H- H- Hiddleston. H- Hiddleston. I think. Will reprise their roles and the MCU's version of um, their, I think, their streaming service that they will be doing. They're reprising the roles as the characters Scarlet Witch and Loki, and Loki in the miniseries. So, are they going to be like their own official series, or is this going to be something where different characters take on different adventures once in a while? Their own series. Their own series? Their own series. So, Loki's going to have a series, Scarlet Witch is going to have a series. I'm sure in Scarlet Witch they're gonna involve Vision. Yeah, he's gonna have to have come to. in here and there. Low key, more likely. What they we'll did say see. is that they are not involving the core characters, such as Thor, uh, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America. They're not involving them. They're, it's gonna be their stories with other ties of characters of not core Avengers. Cool. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind. That means that they could appear with different characters that we haven't seen yet, or we have. Yeah, I would say if they do a Loki series, which I'm interested in, um, they're gonna have hunters. Hunters. The his his uh, his version of his type of Scarlet Witch from Asgard. Hopefully, they can maybe bring her into the series. She was yeah. a good character. She so, was. So I don't mind. You know, I don't mind. I think Marvel really want or DC, Disney actually would say since Disney owns Marvel really wants to jump start this streaming service uh, and they want to do it in the big bang so them getting these car- these guys these you know these actors to reprise their roles in the mini series paying a top dollar is actually a testament of them wanting to make a big push make a big stamp so I don't mind you know, they're miniseries. It's not like we're going to get like a big, you know, season by season, 22 episode version of it. It's a miniseries. Uh, it's a miniseries. It's going to be for a short while. Yep. A few good clips here and there, then it's over. That's it. You know, that's fine. Perfect. Okay, but, I like it. Well, guys, that was our show. Thank you for coming. Hopefully you enjoyed. Johnny G. All right, everybody. As always, thank you for <coughs> being with us as Tony the Kid just said a while ago. That's right. Don't forget to just be with us and feel it. That's right. Y'all take it easy, guys. <laughs>